Hey everybody, we're up here in northern Maine. Got a big house. Today we're just doing the house. There's a bunch of other stuff to do up here too, but they only got the house ready for us. About 32 degrees, pretty cold. They got, you know, they got quite a bit of snow up here previous days. Nothing's really melted. It's just too cold now. We gotta get this house down. It's actually a double wide house. They're gonna be moving it on in about a week though. And there's no real good access after other in these windows there's no bulkhead there's no other way to get down in here once they put that house on we're here today to get this done they got styrofoam down they got some radiant heat down it's gonna be three loads first load just showed up it's about 7 30 in the morning we're gonna get going Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete. Thanks for tuning into my channel. We got another floor we're pouring here today. It's a beautiful day. It's a, it's December now, so so temperatures are getting really really cold here in Maine. Hey, I've got to ask you guys a question. This this foundation right here, it's like 70 something feet long by 28 feet wide roughly, but there's no access in or out to it. Did you guys notice when I show, showed you in the beginning of the video? There's no bulkhead. There's no egress window there's no way to get in and out of the basement from the outside i just don't get that what do you guys think of that down in the comments let me know what you think i mean if you were building a brand new home with a foundation like this wouldn't you want to have some access just for if anything just for safety so a lot of the building codes in maine uh, a lot of towns can have their own building codes it's not like one building code from the state although the state does have building codes Sometimes the towns can can uh, you know just change their codes and and say hey no we don't have a code on that you can do whatever you want. Well in this case you know I think this should be mandatory. Um, I mean that's one of the reasons why we want to get this floor in <laughs> before they put the house on it because trying to shoot the floor through those little tiny windows you see in the bond outs would be absolutely crazy trying to do this and then so let's say they put the house on and then we have to pour the floor afterwards through the windows whether we pump it or shoot it through now what now how do you finish it how do you get a power trial down there you're gonna walk it down through the, the hole in the middle of the floor where the stairs are gonna go plus what do you do with all the carbon monoxide from the power trials so we uh, that's why we like to pour these you know before the houses go on when they're outside we've all had carbon monoxide poisoning way too many times to to be breathing that stuff so um, even if it's real cold out like today we're, we're more than happy to get it done in advance but let me know what you guys think down there I think it's kind of crazy myself brand new home like this so three trucks like I said pouring on top of the two inches of styrofoam uh, they got a poly vapor barrier down underneath that then they got this radiant heat tied in it and then they we didn't do any of the prep here the excavators and the plumbers and the heating guys they did all the prep then they tried to glue up some of that styrofoam up the wall for like a thermal break. That stuff was all loose. Some of it was stuck on a little bit. Some of it was loose. So we were having to deal with that a little bit. You know, just it was another job where, you know, it was uh, hurry, hurry, hurry. Let's get this stuff in. Let's get it prepped. Let's get the floor guys here before the frost sets in and it gets too cold. So it's we run into a lot of those cases starting late November into December where it's just everything's a hurry hurry the outside of this wasn't really backfilled all that great wasn't that level so we're having to deal with that with the trucks backing up to the foundation but at least it was good enough so we could get it you know tailgate it and didn't have to get a pump up here now the concrete itself um, it, this came from an hour away the closest concrete plant to this thing was an hour away so we had to give them quite a bit of notice as far as the poor day and then you know because it's so cold out these concrete plants here in Maine all have hot water boilers so they crank the temperatures of the water way up and this one this one was about 150 degrees that's pretty hot for water typically it'll be around 120 130 that doesn't sound like a big difference but it, it really is especially when the trucks have to travel any fair distance so 150 degrees when they start batching and then you know everything gets mixed in the drum and by the time the concrete gets to the job you know that's that's like a sauna inside that drum so the concrete's already starting to set up 
before it even gets there and you start dumping and then you the trouble is you know if you just leave it if you don't put any accelerator in like that once you get it dumped down like this and you get it to about you know four inches thick or so it loses temperature really really fast so it'll go from being let's say 70 degree concrete to 50 degree concrete you know in maybe an hour hour and a half and once it gets down once the concrete temps get down into the 50s and especially into the 40s uh, the cure rate slows way 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 down so that's why you know you got to still add a little accelerator to it just to just to make sure you get these things done before dark because as you can see there's no power here there's no lights nobody's prepared as far as the general contractor for us being here finishing after dark so it's kind of they, they kind of leave that on us you know hey yeah come up and pour our floor give us a nice finish we want also want it sawed but we're not gonna we're not gonna give you any power lights so we that we deal with that a lot I don't know it's just it's a funny thing up here in Maine on on residential work it just doesn't seem like when you get into the colder months and the winter months that there's a lot of a lot of preparation in advance for something that could go wrong or might go wrong um, and again this this should be covered too with blankets and you know we're just hired we're a sub here so we're just hired to pour and finish the concrete let's install the concrete floor and then the general contractor is really supposed to be responsible for the you know making sure the prep is done right making sure the sub base isn't frozen covering this covering that making sure after we're done the floor gets covered with blankets so the concrete doesn't freeze and so there's no talk with us about doing that at all they just want us to come in pour and finish the concrete and get that one part of the job done they can check that off and then move on so we're having to deal with that quite a bit too but as far as getting the concrete in here and getting it down you know we're even though it doesn't look like we're hustling we are kind of hustling and working together the four of us to get it in because this stuff was setting up really fast and each truck is a little different first truck we thought was setting up really good but actually the second truck was setting up really really fast as I'll show you here in a second all right two down one to go looks like we're gonna have plenty of concrete that first load's setting up really fast. I bet I can almost walk on it right now. We got 150 degree water, nine yards plus two bags of accelerator. I mean, it is only 32 degrees out right now, so we got to make sure this stuff sets up. Luckily, we're on styrofoam today, so that's going to help a little bit. But you got to get the stuff down fast. You can't wait. You got to put mid-range in it, mid-range water reducer, and then. You gotta pour it at a loose enough slump to give you time to work with it, get it screened. It's either that or you you don't use that much accelerator. Then you run into the risk of being here till after dark. So you kind of want to, you know, kind of want to get done at dark at least or before. So that's one of the reasons why we use the accelerator. We don't want to be power trialing and trying to get our saw cuts in in the dark. Now take a look at where that second truck stopped right there, you know, the line where the concrete is and how we're pushing the third truck, the, this third load of concrete up into it. And then I'm going to show you here in a second just how much, how fast that's setting up. You can see there's a distinct line right there. Right now I'm going around and as Luke and Darren, you know, Harvey's holding the chute, kind of redirecting the concrete. Luke and Darren are getting it spread out and I'm magging the edges. So right here, Darren and Luke are striking off the second load, between the second load and the third load. And I'm mag floating that edge right there, trying to work that edge in because that concrete set up so fast right there. And, you know, that's how you make sure that that's really flat between the two loads when you've got one load setting up really fast and the other one's still really loose, which is the third load. 
You can kind of see how when we screed it, we actually switched just to hand screed in this one because the concrete's setting up so fast. It's easier to hand screed because you got more down pressure on the screed by pushing it with your arms than you do with a, a power screed or the vibrating screed, which kind of just floats on the surface. We hand screed a lot anyway, so it's actually not really much harder for us to do it this way than it is to use the vibrating screed, but we're just trying to get this down, get it down fast, because I know it doesn't really look like it in the video, but by the time when you, when it's so, when the concrete's so hot and you got that much accelerant in it, by the time you dump it down and spread it around with the rakes, you literally only have a few minutes to get it screeded and both loaded before it really sets up and you just, you know, you really struggle to get it screeded. We were, as far as the timing goes on these three loads, we, we were actually pretty good on timing. You know, we got it down, we got it screeded without working too hard. I'm kind of working the bull float there pretty good, but we're just going to finish this off. Darren and Luke are going to screed it down to about where I am, magging the edges. And then we're going to get that 14-footer out of there and switch to about a 5-foot screed and work our way back into the corner. And I'll show you how we jump out of this thing. All right, boys. Boys are gonna finish things up. Looks like we need a couple more wheelbarrows down there. It's pretty tight quarters when you get into a corner like that, but there's really no other way to do it. Back yourself into a corner. Make sure you don't forget the ladder. Work your way out. This one's actually got 10 foot walls. Most basements we do here may have, you know, about eight foot high walls. I'm not sure why they had to go 10 foot here. They did. This is a septic tank. So they'll run septic tank out here. This is for the sewer. And there'll be a big leach bed. Looks like the leach bed's going in over there. A lot of you guys live in the city. You don't have you don't have septic tanks and leach beds. <laughs> you got city sewer. Up here in the country, they gotta put those in. And they gotta drill wells, so they'll drill it well. I can see the well casing way, way over there. That, that thing could go down 50 feet, it could go down 500 feet to hit water, you know, you never know. And they usually charge by the foot, so, and then they have a minimum price. This is how we get out of every single basement that we do, and we do a lot of them that doesn't have good access, you know, it has tall walls, is we got to work our way back into a corner, grab the ladder, you know, jump out the ladder. Right now, we left that a little bit low. We didn't want to have to bucket concrete out. It's a little bit easier to bucket concrete in and drop it down to somebody than it is to, to bucket it out and try to lift the concrete up and over the wall so this is we're just getting a few more buckets in there so luke can mag that out get it flat and then he's going to jump out pull the ladder out and you'll see here in a second and this is you know pretty standard for how we get out of a basement like this if you guys have a different way you know let me know but we haven't figured out a better way than doing it like this yet but yeah well that does that. So we got the pour in. Darren and Luke will stay here and finish this off. Power trial it, saw it and everything. I'm gonna head out and check out some other jobs. Coming up, we gotta get done, but yeah, all in all, it went pretty good with the hot water. You never know when the hot water is 150 degrees. These guys gotta travel an hour to get here and then you put accelerator in it. You just never know how fast this stuff's gonna set up, but it actually turned out pretty good for us. I think them guys will get out of here. Probably by 3 o'clock this afternoon, maybe. Should be done. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.